Hi there, my name is Bill Schwab and I'd like to welcome you back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. I'm coming to you again from the Photostock studio in beautiful northern Michigan where today it's a wonderful day outside. I haven't had one of these in a while. Anyway, I'm in the darkroom printing today and I have run out of paper that's treated for the process that I'm working with. And I figured this was a good time to show you how to treat paper. Now you may have heard from people in the past about um, treated papers. Now the reason we have to treat certain papers is because while some papers are made and they don't have any buffers in them that are going to impede the process, a lot of the papers that are made today, different watercolor papers that you might want to try for your printing processes, um, are heavily laden with buffers to make them archival. And this isn't really conducive to uh, a lot of um, alternative processes, platinum and palladium uh, in particular. So when I'm not using a, a Hanamule platinum rag, which is uh, made for the process, I like to use Reeves BFK for certain projects, and that's what I'm printing on today. Now the problem with Reeves is, is that it's not very conducive to the process. It's got a lot of buffers in it, and it doesn't print very well. Now when I say it doesn't print very well, it prints kind of anemically. And what I'll do is, throughout this process, near the end, I'm going to treat just a half of a sheet of paper, and I'll make one image on that one sheet of paper, and you'll see in that half what happens when you haven't treated a paper that needs to be treated for the process. Before I get on with that, I'd like to thank everybody for following along and for subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm continually amazed at how many people are out there interested in these processes, and I hope I can keep bringing you videos that will help you along um, in your home darkrooms. Um, Anyway, uh, what we're going to need for this is a nice straight edge. Um, I like to use a X-Acto cutting mat um, uh, because it's graduated. It has a lot of different um, markings on it, so I know where my measurements are and that kind of a thing. So a straight edge, the mat, is a good thing to have. Uh, for further out in the process, when we actually treat the paper, we're going to need um, a mild acid. And what I like to use for this process is uh, oxalic acid. Now, um, I use a 3% solution of oxalic acid to treat the papers. Now, you can use other things as well. Another thing that I use in a pinch is citric acid uh, or sour salt. Now, citric acid I like to use in a little heavier concentration, maybe 6%. Uh, but anyway, for today's purposes, we're going to use oxalic acid. Uh, then, of course, you're going to want to have a scale um, to measure out the... Uh, the oxalic acid, and uh, I like to use a thousand milligrams of, or a thousand milliliters of, um, of water. Uh, distilled water, preferably, but it doesn't really matter as long as you have a clean water system. Um, I am uh, going to also need a tray, and, uh, and you're going to, of course, need the paper. Now, the paper that I use, as I said, is Reeves BFK, and uh, it comes in 22 by 30 sheets. I buy it in the 250 GSM. It does come in a 300 GSM, but I like to print on the 250. It's a little thinner and finer feeling. Um, I tend to print on a 10 by 11 sheets of piece of paper so I can get six of them out of one sheet. Uh, and you can cut them with an X-Acto knife, of course, or on a paper cutter if you have something big enough. But I tend to like to tear the edges because it comes with a nice deckled edge anyway. And if I tear the edges, it gives me a nice rough edge because I just like to print with clean edges on my prints and have a nice rough edged paper. Um, so anyway, um, what I also do is I tend to stack them when I, when I tear them this way. So I've got three sheets here, so that's going to end up giving me a few sheets for me to use. Um, and what I'll do is I'll take it onto my graduated uh, mat here and I'll set it up at zero. And I know that I'm going to be tr um, tearing them off at uh, 10 inch segments. So I find my 10 inches, I'm at 30 here, I come down to 20 and I am going to mark up 20 up here and then I'm just going to tear off the top sheet of paper. And it's very easy to tear it off. I set it off to the side with the same level, same layer up. Then I take the next sheet, I tear it off again, I take the next sheet, and once again tear it off. And then I move down to my next 10, set, uh, 10 inch increment, and I set up my straight edge once again, and I'm going to once again make the tears. There's one. You can go two at a time sometimes if you want, but I like to just be careful and go with one at a time. There we go, and then I've got another one that's left that way. So then I take them all, I'll stack them up, and now that they're nice and even again, I take them and put them on my, my mat once again, 
and I see that I have always, they're, they, they're, they're called, they're 22 by 30s, but they always come in at 22 and a half by 30. So I've got my mark at 22 and a half. I'll come down here to 11, and then I move up to 11 and a quarter, just so I'm equal on all of them. And I set up 11 and a quarter here, and then I go through and I tear them again one by one, leaving them the same way, the same orientation, because when I do find them, finally soak them in a solution, I like to kind of know what side is the right side of the paper and what's the wrong side. Now we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, you can tell when they're finished drying, they curl a certain way and the way that they curl away from is always the, the side that I like to print on. Anyway, we'll tire, tear through the rest of these. Last sheet. Okay, now I've got my full stacks and I'm ready to go to my my soaking. So it's good to get the other thing out of the way that you don't need. Take the straight edge out. A spoon's a good thing to have too, I didn't mention that before. I'm going to turn on my scale. Now I've already got a thousand milliliters of solution here. I'm just going to put this over and I'm going to bring in my tray. So um, I am zeroed out and if I'm going to go a 30% solution of oxalic acid, I'm using a thousand milliliters. I'm going to need 30 grams of oxalic acid. So I've got the scale here. I've got my tray in here and it's teared out. Let's use my spoon to scoop out 30 grams of oxalic acid. I'm at 36, a little over. There we are. 30 grams. I like to keep things covered when I'm done with them. Now I take that 30 grams and I'm going to take it gently into my water and just dump it in as I'm stirring. And I stir it up and stir it up until I don't have any solids left. It doesn't take very long. A 30% solution doesn't uh, saturate the water that much. I'm all ready. So now let's take our solution now that it's mixed, pour it into our tray, and then we're going to take our sheets of paper and one by one, we're going to drop them in the tray and make sure that they're nice and covered with water or the solution. And then what I do with the next sheet is I bring it in and I put it behind that first sheet make sure that it's covered. And I keep doing that with all of them. So another thing that you can tell about the uh, solution is that it is uh, helping to work is that you see it sort of effervescing sometimes. Now you probably can't see it on the camera right now, but you can see it bubbling up a little bit like Alka-Seltzer and that just means that it's, that it's counteracting the buffers in there. It's doing its thing these last two pieces in here. So now I'm going to let it soak for a good 15 minutes or so. And uh, I'll just disappear for a little bit of time. All right. Okay. It's been about 15 minutes and this paper is good and saturated and uh, it's ready to be hung up to dry. Now what I like to do before I hang it up to dry is let it drain as much into the tray as possible. And I let it drain and drain and drain until it's just dripping a little bit. And then I'll take it into the dark room and I'll hang it up on my drying line. And then it takes about half hour to an hour before I'm ready to print on it. Now again, off camera, I'm treating a piece of paper that's just half treated so that uh, if you wait around till the end, you'll see what happens when I print it. You'll be able to see what happens with the half that doesn't get treated and the half that gets treated. You'll notice a significant difference. So now that the paper's dry, um, I wanted to show you the test that I was going to do where I had one half of the paper coated with the oxalic acid and half of it that I left untreated. Now, I've only just coated the paper and I haven't printed it yet, but even on this you can see how one half of the paper, it seems as if the coating is darker and more rich. 
So this is part of the uh, effect of the treating of the paper. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'll end up putting a negative on this and printing it for a few minutes. And then we'll go through the development process and I'll show you what actually happens. Okay, so now we've run through and done the printing of the paper. And you can see the latent image on there. And even before I go through the developing, you can see a very distinct line across there where there's just obviously going to be a better image here once we pour the developer on here. Uh, but let's do it anyway so that, you, so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing difference. So, I don't even have to do a close-up for you to see that. Uh, but I'll try to zoom in on that anyway so that you can see the, the sharp line and you can see how good the print really is on the part of paper, the paper that's been treated, as opposed to the part of the paper that's been untreated. Um, it's remarkable. Um, so anyway, with that, uh, let's go finish this up. There you go. You've treated some paper and now you're ready to print. And you've also seen the difference between a non-treated paper and a treated paper and what that can do to your final image. Um, before I go, I'd like to also say that not all papers need to be treated before you're printing on. You might want to test them first, or you just might want to check with other people in the community that have done printing before you. Um, the thing is, is that some papers do not have the buffers in there. As I mentioned earlier, I like to use Hanamule Platinum Rag. It's a great paper to use throughout your career, and it's a very good beginner's paper because it doesn't need to be treated. Um, however, some papers out there are quite beautiful and they are not made for this process and you will have to go through the process of treating it like we've done here today. So with that, thank you again. Um, if you've liked the video, please click on a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe on the subscribe button. Uh, I really appreciate your time and I hope that your uh, home darkroom is going well. All right, take care of yourself and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.